Hello and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial from digitalphotographycourses.co.uk My name is Glenn Tilliard and if you've been looking at my previous tutorials you'll recognise this photograph here from Cornwall uh, as being one that was originally very dark and uh, miserable looking i just pop over here and let you see what it looked like that's how the original was before we had little play using adjustment layers and uh, a bit of extra saturation. So we've done the corrections to our picture now and the final thing we need to do is to crop it so we can save it and maybe email it to a friend or canvas mount it or something like that. So before we can do that we need to crop the image and the very last thing we do is we add some sharpening. So what we would like to do is we'd like to crop this image and uh, put it in a frame and I reckon sort of a nice frame around about 12 by 10 uh, something like that uh, so what we'll do is we'll go over to the crop tool which is this one here and the shortcut is C you can see if you hover over any crop tool or any tool in the toolbox it will actually tell you the shortcut so if you press T C on your keyboard it will select the crop, crop tool for you at the top here that will bring up its own dialog box which gives us width, height resolution and pixels per inch. Incidentally these two things here if you click on front image it will pick up the image dimensions of whichever image is on top. This can be quite useful if you want to crop several pictures all to the same size. Uh, so if you click front image it will automatically fill in these areas here for you. Uh, the, mine are coming up as pixels because that's how I keep mine set as a default and if you press clear rather as it sounds it will clear all the measurements out for you. Now Photoshop actually provides a few presets if you drop, have the drop down arrow you've got 6x4, 5x3, 5x7, 10x8 so what we'll do for now is I'm just going to use 10x8 and if you double click it will automatically fill in 8 inches by 10 inches in height now we actually want it to be 8 inches wide rather than uh, high so if you click this little sort of forward and backwards arrow it'll switch them around for you. If we're looking at printing then generally we're looking at a resolution of 300 dpi don't worry about the pixels per inch dpi conversion issue for, for our purposes it's really not a problem. Um, if you prefer to work in centimeters you can but obviously make your measurements over here in centimeters as well. Now We'll try just to demonstrate. I'm actually going to do a crop on here at uh, 10 by 8 inches, as that's the one we've got. So if I just start off in the top right hand corner, hold the left mouse button down and drag diagonally down the frame, this is a crop of 10 by 8 inches. Now, 10 by 8 is actually quite a square format, so as you can see, it means we have to chop off most of the right hand side of the frame, which is not really what I'm looking for. I can move this around and try and find a nice pleasing um, sort of composition that I like. And if I wanted, particularly wanted 10 by 8, if I already had a, a set frame, then I could actually crop there. But I actually want to keep the whole image in if I can. So what I'm going to do is press Escape, and I'm going to choose a slightly different size. So what I'm actually going to choose is a width of 12 inches instead of 10, and I'm going to leave the width the height at 8 inches and the resolution at 300. Again go to the top left hand corner and drag diagonally down and as you can see that just about gets all our photographing. Um, you can fine tune using the up and down arrow keys or the left and right arrow keys if you need to but uh, once you're happy then you can either double click inside the frame or you can press your enter key. So that's just pressing the enter key. And as you see now, my image is resized. So that's it resized ready for mounting. The very last thing we need to do before we save it is to sharpen it. Now, before I sharpen it, I just need to check one thing. Because I've been working on layers, and there's my layers palette, at the moment I'm actually working on the very top layer here, which is the curves layer. And I know that's the case because it tells me here on my sort of title bar. What I need to be working on is the background layer down here. So just click on the background layer, click on the title bar to take the menu away, and now any sharpening I do will affect the background, which is what I'm looking for. The way we sharpen is to go to filter, 
uh, choose sharpen and this strangely named thing called unsharp mask click on unsharp mask and that will bring your uh, representation of your photograph up and this is at 100% this photograph is actually at 25% so ideally you want to be sort of looking at your image at 100% when you sharpen it so what we need to do is at the moment it's set to a sharpening ratio of 200% and it's actually affecting the image and we can see here and we know it's affecting the image because the preview is selected if I just uncheck the preview you can see the image goes softer I don't know if you can tell this on your screen I've actually made it quite high at 200% just to really demonstrate it but you need to choose something that looks right for you and on your screen it does vary with resolution and if you click inside the uh, the box here with the little hand left click then the sharpening switches off and release and the sharpening switches back on again once you're happy then you just click generally speaking these th settings down here just leave it one and zero uh, for most pictures just click OK and that sharpens your image up nicely the next thing we need to do is we come to save it now if you want to keep the layers intact which we do you need to save it as a PSD file save as give it a name and I'm just going to keep the same name here and save it as a PSD as you see it already exists so I will choose to replace that one there we go and um, but if you want to send it to somebody maybe as a smaller file because PSD files are really quite large if you want to email it to somebody then you want to save it as a JPEG and the way we do that is go file save as from this drop down box at the bottom here choose JPEG and you see that it keeps the same name but it writes copy on the end of it you don't really need that word on there so I would tend to just take that off take out any spaces okay once you're happy you click save Oh, just going to cancel out of there one second. Just a little tip for you. File, save as. When you do come to save it, it's always a good, nice idea I quite like to save it with the size on the end. So, for instance, in this one, if we say uh, 12 by 8, it just when you're looking for lots of pictures of the same picture, it just helps you find the one you're looking for. So Cornish Waterfall 12 by 8. Click on save and you'll get the dialog box come up here and you can choose at what quality to save it. If you're saving it for use or just for storage on your computer I would certainly save it to the maximum setting. Uh, if you have a look down here it will tell you how big that file is going to be and you can make the decision if you are emailing how large it is. Uh, if you choose sort of medium that's three and a half megabytes at the moment if you choose medium it will go down to just over one megabyte so if, you know be aware if you are emailing I'm actually going to save this at the maximum quality and click OK and there we go that is how to crop and save a PST file and save a JPEG so I hope you've enjoyed that lesson and please call again soon for some more Photoshop tutorials from digitalphotographycourses.co.uk.